So, welcome to the third series of the evening. We're playing the Losers Bracket match. S and we're on Frost, spawning to the top right hand side in pink. Playing Terran as off race, it's Ms. Magitek. And spawning to the bottom right hand side in purple, playing her main race, it's Anolia. So this is going to be an interesting series, especially since it's the loser's bracket. So the lady that loses this series is out of the tournament, uh, the tournament, unfortunately. So uh, we'll see what these two are, what these two are up to. Anolia actually decided to go for a main race in the first match, so it seems as if she actually wants to go for an early lead, maybe finishing it off with her second best race which might be Protoss since her Terran game against Miyako didn't look that well. Then again, playing Terran against Miyako, or playing, yeah, playing Terran against Miyako actually never looks good. So, <laughs> I think, um, yeah, that's not um, a game where we can just see a trend in Anolia's play with. So, let's see. Uh, but, like I said, that seemed in this case she really wanted to get her best race out first. Maybe even thinking about Miss Magitek not, probably not taking Zerg, and maybe she wanted to avoid the ZVZ matchup. Or maybe she thought or oh, the other way around, that Miss Magitek maybe would also choose Zerg as her main race. And uh, then she would fight in a ZVZ, which she seems to be quite good at. So, yeah, we'll see what's uh, going to happen afterwards. The interesting thing, of course, is that Miss Magitek, after this first game, will still have the possibility to play with her main race, which she will probably do if she loses the first game, which is pretty probable, since she has to play Anolia's main race right now. But after that game, both of them will have to play an off-race, a total off-race match. So, yeah, I think this is going to be really interesting. So, Miss Magitek going for the Reaper build right now, just uh, trying to... Uh, scout her opponent a little bit better. Miss uh, Anolia has already realized where her opponent is so with this overlord over here, so she sends the second overlord to a better position as well. While Miss Magitek now tries to scout her opponent a little bit better with uh, the Reaper after having scouted the base with the SEV. So now goes in uh, over the Reaper stair over at the back side of the map. Um, just uh, back side of the main, just trying to get in. Oh, has to be careful, she can't really fight against the queen! Had uh, to had with the Reaper, is was probably not really watching or paying attention to that Reaper at all, so it dies. Uh, still getting the kind of necessary information, but not really, not really seeing that Roach Warren over here, and not really seeing whether that spawning pool was wiggling or not. So she does not really have the information that her opponent skipped speed, um, that would have maybe tipped her off that a Roach build was coming. I mean, Miss Magitek's main race is Zerk, so she should actually know the signs, right? So if she scouts her opponent, she should know what she sees and what her opponent is probably up to. So we'll see whether Miss... Uh, but, but then, of course, if you play your off race, knowing what your, um, uh, what your opponent does and defending against it are two different things. So, of course, knowing is half the battle, but only half. The other half is divided into macro and micro. And we'll see whether Miss Magitek will be able to do something or not. Has already gone for an early command center here. Uh, while the first few links now try to get in, there's only one marine around, uh, which is not even inside the bunker. So now it is. Uh, the bunker will also help defending Miss Magitek quite a bit, since it... Um, gives the marines um, a better range once they are inside. Don't ask me how this works on a technical basis, it's actually not really logical, but hey, it's a game, you know, so don't let us discuss stuff like that. Uh, now just keeps producing. This time around, <laughs> she built Stim way faster after forgetting it uh, in the game against Poison. So now, uh, already learning. Yeah, we're already witnessing the process of learning in Miss Magitek's game. But we can already see, I mean, it's her it's her off race. She's at 37 supply, while Anolia is already at 67, uh, taking a third base, producing roaches like crazy. And even without Ravagers, this will be pretty problematic to hold for Miss Magitek. She doesn't even have a full wall off, so the roaches can actually just walk by uh, the 
uh, the bunker just go uh, just going inside the middle line then the bunker won't really help her at all but she also has some ravages as well will now throw down the ravages onto the bunker bunker gets destroyed almost immediately now will just burn down gets destroyed by the one ravager and the only stuff that miss magitech has right now are a few marines has to pull workers right now and go down with the marines maybe focus firing the ravages but it just will, still won't be enough i think miss magitech just wants to raise the supply depots uh, producing a few more units waiting for stim to finally finish but it's still about 30 seconds well now only 20 more to go it hasn't even raised the depots right there so yeah anolia can just walk into everything i think miss magitech is actually quite glad uh, she ggs out <laughs> and knows that this wasn't a really good game off of her it's the second game of the series we have apotheosis spawning to the top left hand side in pink playing her main race it's Miss Magitech. And to the bottom right hand side in purple, playing her off race Protoss, it's Anolia. Actually, it would have been quite interesting. Maybe I should have done that. I will think of that later uh, or the next time we are going to host a tournament like that. Um, to ask the players about their best and worst race. I mean, obviously the main race is the best race, but coming after that, uh, what are the second best and the third best race? I think that would be quite interesting to know beforehand in order to talk about it a little bit. So, and only just going for a standard gateway first, not a proxy gateway, so it seems as if she wants to play some kind of straight up game while um, Miss Magitech just uh, goes for the hatch first build into pool into gas, so a little bit safer than the uh, hatch gas pool build. Um, probably just doesn't want to lose uh, against Anolia's off race, so in the meantime we just have some overlords crossing the map in order to get some more map vision and some scouting later on. Anolia has sent a probe in order to get the information whether her opponent is going for, for some cheese or not. We'll see the base building just now and uh, then we'll see that the spawning pool hasn't completed yet. Uh, again, of course we can just talk about timings and how uh, the players should know something from those timings, but never forget that uh, they are playing off race. And even if uh, Zerg is Anolia's main race, and like I was stating before in uh, the game in game one, uh, where Miss Magitech should actually know uh, what's coming by seeing what her opponent is doing because she mains the same race as her. Um, it's still not that easy because you're under a lot of pressure trying to think of a lot of things while playing your off race. So yeah, scouting just becomes so problematic when playing your off race. Um, if you never have done it or just do it occasionally. Because, like I said before, you just have to think of so many things macro-wise and micro-wise, mostly macro-wise actually. Uh, just hitting the right buttons, just using the correct hotkeys, whatever. I mean, if you don't play random um, regularly, you actually really have a big problem with the hotkeys already. And not, not knowing the, the certain hotkeys. I mean, if you play grit, you might not have as big of a problem, but still you have to watch out what the hotkey actually builds this kind of building. And then you have to think of your strategy. What building do you want to build next? So everything just comes a little bit slower. And of course you send off units for scout because you're just used to it with all the races, no matter. Uh, what race you main but after the initial scout scouting just becomes so problematic to think about and here actually the the idea of walling off i mean you know that you have to wall off as protoss but how to do it correctly is still a different thing to do and it seems as if magitech just loses most of her links against this uh, introduction uh, this this um first zealot over here oh then and that was actually what i was thinking about uh Right before, it was looking as if there was a gap, but Miss Magitech was still attacking that zealot. So it seemed to me as if the gap was not there at all, but now it finally, we now we finally see that there actually is a gap. And yeah, as a Zerg player, if you main Zerg, it, it's a quite odd concept at some point to really wall off, especially with protein, with Protoss buildings. I mean, as a Zerg, you normally can also just spread creep towards the natural entrance, but that normally happens a little bit later in the game. And then, of course, you know the um, the width of your buildings, but not of the Protoss buildings. And you're not used to having pylons inside that construction. So everything does not really work 
quite the well it's supposed to be. So Anolia at least had a probe out here in order to check for a third base, maybe even for some proxy pylon shenanigans. Now just goes for double robotics facility. So it seems as if she's watched quite a lot of Coach Key's games against Zerg and now wants to go for an immortal build or an immortal push. Or she just wants to copy maybe kind of Piscalina, but she doesn't go for double robotics. But she plays more stalker heavy, so we'll see. I mean, maybe Piscalina just does whatever the hell she's thinking of right at that moment. So we'll see. I mean, that uh, gap over here is now filled with Zella. That gap over here is actually still open if Miss Magitek had a lot of speed links just running in through that little gap over here. But now finally Anolia manages to uh, put these stalkers into position. Has she actually seen something? No, she hasn't, but maybe she's just realized what's going on. So, or what could happen if the stalkers weren't put inside that little gap over here. So now finally Miss Magitek doesn't really have the- Ooh, but hasn't this- Oh, this cell does not on hold command, so it unfortunately moves out. And now, unfortunately, the links even get a good surround because the stalkers just dare to move out towards the front a little bit too far. And only just warping in more and more units, trying to hold this the situation right here. Miss Magitek actually seems to have forgotten that there still was a gap over here. She wouldn't even have needed to take down the stalker over here. Could have just ran in with everything she had. But uh, yeah, now actually, and this is like I said before, I mean, if you don't have the experience how to place your buildings, uh, you just build something like this, giving a lot of surface area towards your opponent uh, that will make it so much easier to take down this warp gate if need be. So right now we have the warp prism flying out, uh, one immortal just producing. Okay, so it seems as if there's not a real big plan behind Anolia's play. I think she just improvises on the fly. So uh, Miss Magitek just going into these drop lords while uh, building some roaches and the roach speed as follow up. So she just wants to put some pressure on her opponent and finish her off with roach ravagers. And that should actually work out quite well because there's not much that Nolia has at her main base. There's already a few ravagers and roaches in front of her base. She might be able to apply some pressure in uh, Miss Magitek's main base, but it might actually be too late since uh, most of her units will be inside the main, uh, inside the natural base of Anolia while she is trying to apply some pressure and now even just having to micro back at home so she won't be able to warp in at the center actually never mind uh, she will do but just placing the sentries and no I think she's just did it a little bit incorrectly so now we finally realize what Anolia's plan actually was right from the get-go she obviously wanted to get inside the main base blocking the main ramp with um, force fields, but yeah, she will never be able to do that plan since the roaches now stream inside her natural base. All of the important units that normally dish out the damage have already been killed. One more immortal is in production, but a lot of pr important production facilities are also dying while we are speaking. Now she finally just moves everything inside the base. Don't know what happened over here. It seems as if she still didn't really manage to load in the sentries and instead just sent them over towards the third base where they just got killed. GG and Miss Magitek expectedly expectedly takes the second game ties it up one to one welcome to the third and final map once more uh in this best of three series we're on king sejong station spawning to the top left hand side in purple playing her off race terran it's anolia and to the bottom right hand side in pink, playing also her off race Protoss, it's Miss Magitek. So let's see, I mean, this is a complete off race match right now, and I think that Terran should be Anolia's worst. Uh, worst off race maybe like I said before maybe maybe it doesn't really matter if she's Protoss or Terran to her some people would argue that Protoss is probably easier than Terran when you have to play it for the first time don't really know if uh, I'd agree with that but yeah you can think of it whatever you want so actually there's a there's a pesky probe down here but it seems as if it's just walked down there because anolia has already gone for a full wall off denying the probe entrance to her main base 
So Ms. Magitek just has to stay outside for now. We'll of course be able just to get up the ramp, see some buildings over here, but not really getting that much more information. And yeah, as I said before, I think it really is sort of a clever idea to go for some kind of one base push for, yeah, for barracks. To go for full out one base all in, I will have to say now, in order to just win with your off race. And maybe that was Anolia's plan right from the get go. It would actually be interesting to talk about that later on. Maybe I'll ask her uh, in the FSL chat later on in order to see whether she really was planning this uh, right from the get go. It would be interesting. So, and Miss Magitek, again, just doing. Um, the kind of formal opening going into a stalker, which is a little bit odd here, but well, never mind. So she really wants to get her um, base up, and this could actually lead to her losing, but she has a proxy pylon as well. It seems as if she wants to throw down a stargate and go in with an oracle. No, Twilight Council DTs, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be some sort of DT rush. So we'll see whether Anolia will be able to make something happen. And again, it's the three, no, actually this time around, four Rex Reaper build. And I would actually have to ask a Terran about this, but I think you won't have enough gas to, uh, gas. You won't have enough gas to produce enough Reapers from all of the barracks. And I think actually Anolia already realizes that and just produces some Marines as well. So it seems as if she really wants to go for a big Marine Reaper kind of build, or she just sends out the Reapers right now, trying to apply some pressure and then, oh, even scouting a little bit, it seems, with, uh, or that was maybe, that was either a Miss Rally. Oh, do they see it? Probably not, there it is, but just barely not. So yeah, the Dark Shrine might even work. Of course, you still will have to have um, a Warp Prism over here in order to get inside Anolia's base. But if she does, and Anolia doesn't really expect it, it might be quite problematic. Unfortunately for Ms. Magitek, she again has forgotten and probably hasn't had even enough resources, but now she does, in order to get the Mothership cores. So defending against these early Reapers will be quite problematic for her. I mean, she should have a Stalker, right? She built she, she built a, some kind of Stalker early on, I think she did. Where is it? Or is she just... Is that the Stalker? That's the Stalker. Unfortunately, it's right in front of uh, Anolia's base, just trying to get some more information. And yeah, this, this Stalker would have worked wonders. Uh, yeah, now, of course, Ms. Magitek realizes that her opponent doesn't have a second base. So she knows that some kind of all-in is headed her way. Dark Shrine almost finishes up, but she might have to warp in DTs back at home in order to defend against this push. Reaper at least, uh, Adept at least gets one Reaper over here. Another probe might die. Finally, we have two Stalkers that will get rid of that pesky Reaper here. And a Mothership Core is ready now as well. So defending at home should be way easier than before. Still, the problematic thing is that Miss Magitek finally has the Dark Templar tech. But she doesn't have a warp prism, so okay, yeah, now maybe she lures out her opponent's units. Okay, uh, Anolia just actually goes for the second uh, attack that is actually the all in we were talking about. And now, of course, she has to leave her supply depot down if she wants to rally these units behind as well. I think this is more like the kind of, well, I have enough money anyway, so let's throw down this command center here, because you normally just can't really afford to do that if you just kept producing out of all your buildings. Um, because on one base you can normally just sustain four buildings and not more. So yeah, this I mean this is this is like the move. Uh, it seems as if Miss Magitek is really afraid of that big push. Well, sends home that Dark Templar as well. Although she would have now had the chance in order to uh, to get back into the mineral line um, of um, Anolia here and just destroy all of the economy, making it almost impossible to do something afterwards. So at least one photon overcharge gets uh, thrown out. Yeah, Miss Magitek now just will be able to kill off everything eventually with the help of the Dark Templar. Dark Templars actually kill off... No, you don't even have to retreat! Don't forget Dark Templars do crazy amounts of damage even if they are revealed. So, yeah, actually that wasn't even necessary, but it's typical to do so. Oh my god, my cloaked unit got revealed! I have to retreat! But actually you don't have to if there aren't as many units. 
So, yeah, pretty easy cleanup for Miss Magitek here. She's way ahead right now, since she has already had her second base for quite some time. Supplies also tell the story. We have 30 workers against 20. Not what would be possible, but actually quite nice for two players playing their off races here. Yeah, and of course, it's still problematic for Enolia because her opponent has the possibility to know to do ability T's. She knows that now. Well, actually, quite not reaction throws down a bunker and a missile turret at the typical entrance points, but not where her mineral lines are. I mean, this uh, missile turret will probably cover part of the mineral line, but not all of it. So if the T that gets in here by, say, using a warp prism can also still do some um, action. And especially back in the main base, where the mineral line is totally unprotected. So if um, Magitek actually notices that, produces a warp prism out of that robo, she will be able to do quite some significant damage still, if she thinks of it, of course. But the other problem is that she might already think a bit further, knowing that her opponent now knows that she is able to produce some DTs. So she might not really want to go in there with DTs, not really investing any more gas and minerals into DTs, since she expects her opponent to be prepared anyways. So, yeah, let's see. In the meantime, she just does the logical best thing, throws down a third base, and uh, will now just have the possibility to go into a... Um, a very well macro game, um, which should probably actually work out quite well for her, even um, producing some upgrades as well. Stim now finally on the way for Enolia, who had probably hoped to just win that game with the initial marine push. Uh, didn't quite work out, and now, like I said before, she's really far behind, just trying to get some sort of bio mine mix that might help her, and actually some good mine hits could work wonder against this um against this gateway based army here especially well there is an observer in here still i mean mines if they get the shot out do terrible damage to protoss units if they are clumped up especially so we'll see whether anolia will be able to turn the tables once more or if this game is actually almost over. Nice use of the Widow Mine over here, I think, just using it as a scouting Widow Mine that can also destroy little pushes or already get the units damaged quite a bit before the opponent actually even realizes that the mine is there. So we still have the hidden tech over here that Anolia does not really know about. I mean, of course she knows that her opponent is capable of producing um, Dark Templars. Observer gets shot down. Um, vision provided by that missile turret at the front. And yeah, actually Miss Magitek is now giving her opponent quite some time to recover from the first blow. So, or not, not really from the first blow, I mean Anolia actually just damaged herself with the attempt to do um, an all-in build that actually failed phenomenally. So... But she's catching up quite nicely, we have to say. I mean, 85... Uh, already. Still, she's only at 27 harvest, uh, harvesters, and I don't really know if she is throwing down mules correctly. Well, not that much energy banked up on the command centers, so quite okay for someone who's not playing Terran that often. And now, finally, the big army moves out. I mean, we have plus one and stim. We only have also plus one, but no AoE tech yet. There's one DT in here, but of course there will be enough scans in order to just um, uh, get vision of that. Okay, it seems as if Anolia just wants to go through... No, okay, what, what does she do now? I don't know, I think this was a misclick. For, for, for a second there, it seems as if she really wanted to get through these rocks here, and now she again moves... Okay, it was probably just a misclick. A uh, hell of a lot of marauders in here, though, so not really that big of a damage output she has there. I mean, Urban Marauders still deal quite a lot of damage, but not as much as the Marines do. You normally only want to have a few Marauders in your biomix in order to buffer some damage. And the Marines just provide the DPS, so no, I think that should actually not work. I mean, it's it's quite okay for Anolia here because most of her units can actually fire and attack, while most of the Puna Protoss units can't, but there's the Photon Overcharge as well. So I don't think that Anolia can win this fight. Now scans, but the DTs are still providing a hell of a lot of damage. Even the Immortal now dishing out the damage as well because it's mostly a Marauder-based army. Anolia just loses everything, and Miss Magitek knows... Her time has finally come, just moves everything up to the front and is probably going to 
um, just destroy your opponent right away. I mean, there's one Widow Mine over here. She's just retreated it from that point. So we will probably see it hit a lot of Zealots right there. Um, does, did she actually see it? Oh, actually, well, very well done! Miss Magic actually realizes there's a mine in here, just sends in one zealot before, and now just tears through that bunker, walks in with everything, now there's even no more detection, and Miss Magic says the, takes the third game, wins the series 2 to 1.